And welcome guys. Uh, today we have a 3D print. A uh, pretty simple project you can see here. I found this is a Star Wars, I believe it's the Acclimator class ship, first seen in Attack of the, uh, Attack of the Clones. And uh, pretty cool ship. Uh, I don't know of any kind of uh, plastic model kit or anything like that. I think I've seen a few like uh, resin kits and stuff, um, garage kits, things of that nature. But found this on Thingiverse. Um, I think there were several. I was looking for something kind of easy to print. Uh, this prints in two parts, obviously, uh, without any support, which is always nice. So you don't get those uh, support marks on your print. Now, I filament printed this with my bamboo a1 printer and it did a really good job here you can see um just very minimal layer lines here and we're going to be priming this and sanding a little bit on this flat surface and um i'm really happy how the print came out the sidewall details are really nice and you have this uh, back section the drive section that uh has some really nice detail to it for a especially for a filament printer now i did get some lifting up on the very edges here uh, obviously, I'm going to have to be gluing this together. You can see here, there's a gap, and that's on uh, both ends. So what happened is on this part, when it was printing, I guess at the very end, it started lifting up and then adhered to the plate. Nothing major, nothing that can't be fixed. We'll just have to use a little bit of putty. And I may use some styrene to kind of help conceal uh, some of these uh, the separation lines that we're going to have once we glue these parts together. Um, but other than that, it's really just about painting. I'm not going to try to light it. I guess if you're really ambitious, you could hollow out all this to get to these engines and whatnot. I'm not going to do that. I just spent uh, quite a while working on the Venator, uh, and I'm just ready for some kind of easy projects for us stepping back into another project like that. It takes a lot of prepping and, and doing stuff. Uh, this is basically I'm going to glue these parts together and going to work on the painting. That being in mind, I, I want to do it in the kind of Republic um, style with the red markings. And uh, obviously it was Republic anyway, but uh, and there were, I think in the original movie, they were all white. And uh, I think in the animated shows and stuff, they had some versions that had some red stripes and then the center section's red and maybe on the bottom. Um, I do have left over from my Venator, the Republic, that um, red circle uh, de uh, marking of the Republic, and so I might use that on here to give a little bit more visual interest. Uh, may try to paint some um, windows in and stuff like that. So anyway, I'm just going to glue this together and start working on those seams, and it should be a pretty fairly easy project. Uh, the big thing is going to be just getting that seam line done. Going to be a lot of masking and stuff like that, but we'll uh, get to that uh, later. So let's just get busy. All right, I've joined the two sides that were two parts of my ship together, the front and back. And as expected, I'm going to have some um, gap filling to do here. I got it together pretty level. Won't be too bad right in this section. It's mostly going to be on these ends where it lifted up off the print. And I do have a bit of a gap on the bridge section right there. And I think that um, the way to go about that, you can kind of press it together, but it starts lifting the front end up. So I think taking a piece of uh, very thin styrene, as you can see, cut out here, and kind of sliding it in here. You can see where I've already kind of started cutting away a little bit in there. But I'm going to go ahead and fit this in here, then glue that, and then I can take an X-Acto knife and trim away the excess, and then sand down the rest, and I think that will fill that gap. Uh, a lot better than trying to put putty or stuff in there. So um, go ahead and work on that and start addressing these seam lines. All right, as you can see here, I have my ship now all put together with the seam lines addressed. And I used some, mostly just uh, Bondo glazing and spot putty. Uh, what I did is take a little bit of uh, masking tape and put it really close to where I needed it, and then just took my finger and kind of mashed it inside the groove, let it dry, and then, of course, of sanding it so where it's mostly gone now from the front and or the top and bottom of the ship. And you see here, there's also now a 
<clears throat> primer layer and I used this iron armor sandable primer to give a coat, pretty heavy coat because I was trying to get rid of some of the layer lines. You can see where I've, I've now sanded some of this back off to give it a smoother appearance. But it's looking pretty good. Um, pretty happy with how these seams are mostly gone. If you look closely, you can see a few little blemishes here and there, but for the most part, the two parts are coming together quite well. And we had to adjust those gaps. The biggest issue was the gaps on the side here is a little bit where I've had to resand, uh, but this one's pretty pretty close to not being able to tell. And I think once we get it painted with uh, some of the weathering and and plating that I plan on doing, that hopefully it'll camouflage a little bit more. So from here, I'm going to uh, uh, mask off some panels throughout the ship. Not going to go quite as crazy as I did with the Venator that I did recently, but I am going to. Uh, do some different um, kind of shapes and stuff along the uh, top and bottom to give it a little bit more detail. And then we'll administer the primary coat, which will be this mix of acrylic paints. It's kind of a creamy color, creamy white with a little bit of a warmish tan to it uh, that I mixed up. And it's all ready to go, so I'll be painting over that. Uh, but I'll, before we get to paint, I'll show you the masking job once I get that done. You see here, I have it all masked off. This is uh, three different sizes of masking tape, not overboard, just hopefully enough to kind of break up the pattern, uh, give it a little more detail, or at least appearance of detail. Didn't even go quite as much on the bottom. Uh, you're mostly gonna be looking at the top. So now it's on to our primary color, and uh, we'll come back once that's on. All right, as you can see here, I have painted it and there's masking tape on it now. The reason for the masking tape is I'm just not happy with this cover. It came, color, it came out way too brownish, tannish, too creamy. I just don't like that color. So I'm gonna be repainting that, but I figured I'd go ahead and add in some more panels. It's gonna look a little weird when I first pull out, pull off all the uh, masking tape, but we'll have to do like a blending coat, which will be a lighter color. So I plan on doing like a kind of a light gray now to get it. Um, just a cooler color. This is way too warm for me. Um, we'll put it, that color on, pull the masking tape off, and then we'll just do a very faint color to kind of blend all these uh, light and dark um, areas that we'll have from the masking tape. So we're going to mix up a light gray color, and we'll get that painted up and see what that looks like. All right, well, I have my primary coat on now and my misting coat uh, to kind of tone down the different paneling. Um, initially, when I pulled off the masking tape, um, it was a little bit stark, and that was a, to be expected. Um, but I put on my different coats. Uh, before I put on my misting coat, though, I did, um, on some of these, there's a little bit of uh, kind of where I had the masking tape, a little bit of... Uh, it's kind of an edge from where a um, slight paint build up. So I took some of this uh, 2000 grit sandpaper and just slightly went over kind of eliminating and blending that so you didn't get those kind of hard edges where that masking tape was pulled up. But then I did a very light misting coat to kind of blend it all together so it wouldn't be so such a stark contrast between the panels and the uh, um, primary coat. And I'm really happy with how that color looks much better than that warmer color. And uh, it's kind of getting there. Uh, the paint itself was this this dolphin gray uh, craft paint that I uh, mix and blend down into a container. And what I do is I, I pour some in there, um, maybe about a quarter full, and then I mix in a few drops of alcohol, a little bit of water, uh, distilled water, and then a drop or two of this rinse aid. I forgot where I saw this, uh, but this will help with like the viscosity of it, and it'll help it to um, airbrush and not dry out as fast. And uh, so that really helps the mixture, but it's, it airbrushed uh, quite well. And I've also gone over with a satin coat to kind of protect all this. So from here, I'm gonna start masking off the red emblems because I'm doing it in that Republic style. And I saw a few different versions, but basically kind of this section's red, and then you have uh, five stripes kind of in this area right here. So uh, I'll be masking that off. The bottom was this like, kind of like this single section. On most of them that I was able to get a bottom view, it looked like only this part right here was uh, that red color. So I'm gonna get that masked off and painted and we'll come back once that's done.
All right, I have my striping on, my dark red color, along with the decals that were left over from my Venator model kit. Uh, I think that worked out pretty well. I think I did a pretty good job of matching the colors on the decals uh, with the stripe, and I just took some of this burgundy from Anita's acrylic paints and mixed it up and diluted it with my normal um, solution there and added just a couple of drops of black into it to darken it up a little bit and it was a little bit lighter but once I put a clear coat it's um, really close to the color so I was pretty happy with that um, whenever you're like masking putting red on it's you have to mask it off really good you'll red for always shows when it bleeds but I didn't have it wasn't too bad I had a few spots I'd clear coated it before I had sprayed that, so the, the spots where red kind of seeped in, I was able to get in with a Q-tip with just a little bit of alcohol and clean that off pretty quickly. Uh, on the bottom, we have just this single stripe going down the center of the bottom of the ship. And now we're painting is done here, so from here, I'm going to do some uh, oil washes on it, uh, maybe a little bit of dry pastels, um, and that should finish it up. I'll mount it on a display stand. So when I come back, we'll look at the finished model kit. All right, well, here's our completed Star Wars Acclimator Light Cruiser, uh, the Republic uh, ship. This is, of course, the 3D printed one that I got off Thingiverse and just finished up once I had all the... I uh, put a clear coat on, of course, uh, once I did all the painting and decals. And then I did uh, some uh, dry pastels and uh, some grays, dark grays, a little bit of blacks. to kind of dark in there uh, just to kind of give it some depth, bring out some details around the engine nozzles. Uh, just give it a little bit more of a uh, used look to it. I didn't want to go too heavy. I wanted it to still look um, kind of pristine. Uh, but just a little bit of darkening in here, so kind of some false shadowing uh, a little bit in here uh, along the trench area. I did some some darkening of those colors in there. Let's see if I can kind of bring that into focus for you. You can see a little bit of the uh, darkening just here and there, not a whole lot. And uh, as far as the base here, this is something I designed on Tinkercad and 3D printed that. This is a very simple kind of square base and then uh, some um, brass tubing. Uh, I did print this uh, part right here, um, and I did attach that to the ship. It was the only way to kind of stabilize on that, that onto the ship. As you can see here, it comes off. Um, but this part I also designed. I did take the measurements, so it would kind of at least look like it belonged there. Uh, but I don't think it takes away from the model any. And it holds it nice and level and securely onto the base. So anyway, pretty simple project. I probably uh, won't do any major model kit projects for the rest of the year. There's just so much going on. But I do plan on doing some 3D printing projects, um, putting my uh, Bamboo Labs A1 to use. Uh, really enjoying the use of that printer. I think it um, really kind of expands being able to do these types of ships that don't have kits on them. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, everybody have a good one.